Hello everyone, my name is Yellow and welcome back to week 5 of the raw side of the GM mode on WWE 13. And to kick things off, I'm showing you the news. And as you can see here, Damien Sandow has won the European Championship and Chris Jericho has won the Undisputed Championship. And both of those matchups happened on the Extreme Rules pay per view, which was the last show, I guess. And uh, since then, Myself and Brandon, Brendan have done some tr tra tra trades. I can't even talk today, and we decided on one trade out of the whole thing, and you'll be able to see him on this match card. Randy Orton, there he is. I picked up Randy Orton, traded him for Undertaker, so I don't have Undertaker anymore, but I do have Randy Orton, and. You might be thinking, why did you do that for Undertaker as a much better wrestler and stuff like that and blah blah blah. And it's simply because Undertaker hasn't even had a match on my universe mode yet. And, well, he was in the original picks for Extreme Rules, but then after that he sort of got switched over. And to be honest, I'm not really too big of a fan of him on the game, I guess. And Randy Orton is great on the game. So it, that's why I traded him over. I wanted to get Randy Orton and I did. And all of the trades that we tried to do just fell through and none of them happened. So that is the only trade that is going to happen for this month. So we have the matchups here. And, you know, as always, we're going to pick three of them. And honestly, I think I'm just going to pick those last three there. Dalton Glover's Christian, Randy Orton vs. Kane, and Sheamus vs. CM Punk for the main event. So we will simulate these first matches. Cody Rhodes beat Kofi Kingston, and Rikishi beat The Miz. So we have Dolph Ziggler, the former European champion, who is now entitled to a rematch against Christian here. So we will skip to the match. <laughs> So there we go, Christian, Dolph Ziggler, I'm going to be the one and only Dolph Ziggler, the former European champion, until Extreme Rules, where he got beat by Damien Sandow in a steel cage, no, it wasn't a steel cage match, was it? Actually, I can't even remember what it was, I think it was a steel cage match on the Raw show, that Dolph Ziggler won really quickly, and then on Extreme Rules it was a ladder match, TLC, I can't even remember right now. But either way, Damien Sandow did win the European Championship from Dolph Ziggler. And because of that, Dolph Ziggler is no longer champion. And he does have his rematch clause. And he is number one contender. So I don't know when that match will happen. Probably at the next pay-per-view, to be honest. But for right now, Dolph Ziggler is facing off against Christian in this matchup. And just on the way to the ring, Dolph Ziggler looked so bare without a championship around his waist. And... He can't be too happy with losing it, especially to Damien Sandow, considering he was a new pick to the roster from the DRC coming out. But um, yeah, I'll just talk a little bit about the trades. I mean, we did go back and forth. We had five trade attempts each, and you know, I did. I mean, Brendan obviously wanted um, Del, uh, Del Rio, which he's been saying on his videos and stuff. So I was trying to get some good deals off, which made me sort of get up there with the better picks, I guess. I mean, I tried trading Del Rio for John Cena and for Antonio Cesaro, and none of those were really working. And, you know, Brendan also tried to trade me Bret Hart for HBK and people like that. But honestly, I'm not really too much of a fan of the older guys to play as them, and I don't really want too many of them 
on my roster to be honest. I mean, too cool, I'm fine with, but you know, other than that, I don't really have many legends, I guess. I mean, HBK hasn't been in a match yet, I don't think, and he's on my roster, um, so I'm gonna. Well, I, I can't really do anything about that. I might put him into a title match at the next pay per view so that he actually gets into a match, but other than that, I can't really do too much about it. I mean, that's the same with Big Show so far. I was honestly expecting him to be in a lot of matches considering he's a big guy and, you know, he's like a good main event type person. So I was expecting him to be in a lot of matches and then, you know, with the champion being face at the time, the CM Punk, I was having him sort of face. Um, I was hoping to have some good heel versus face matchups for the main championship, but then again, he's sort of lost it now I guess I mean Chris Jericho the new undisputed champion which is great I mean CM Punk is now in a match on Raw I mean what's going on there but now that means that <laughs> um, Jericho will probably never be played again which it's just a a win-loss situation I guess it seems like the main champion never gets put on the matches on the show but then the pay-per-view they're always picked to defend their championships which I don't really like, to be honest. I like having champions actually being in matches, I guess. And the whole roster actually getting used instead of the same people being used over and over, which is what happened with Brutus Clay and The Miz. But that seems to have calmed down a bit now, and Brutus Clay isn't really in matches now, I guess, which is good. I'm glad that that whole little rivalry thing that lasted about four weeks has ended. Because it was annoying and rubbish. I mean, Brutus Cliff is Miz. Who actually would want to see that? Nobody! <laughs> but yeah, that kind of happened. And wow, that was an interesting move, I guess. From the top ropes there. But Dolph with the finisher now. He could actually pick up the win now if he gets back in the ring. And is Christian even hurt? No, he's not. Christian doesn't even hurt yet. We'll aim for the head though, considering the zigzag will hurt his head. Oh no, I've went for the finisher straight away. I didn't mean to do that. Zigzag, good for the pin. One, and a kick out at one. Dolph Ziggler could have got a quick win there against Christian early on in the match, but no, Christian kicks out. And Christian really needs to come back to WWE television soon. I mean, he's a great wrestler and I love seeing him on telly. I mean, he's television, he's great. And, um... Yeah, it would be good to see him back. I mean, Del Rio, current World Heavyweight Champion, I honestly don't think that will last too long. I feel like Dolph Ziggler, his time is coming to cash in very soon. So I feel like that will probably happen soon. And he will be the new World Heavyweight Champion soon enough. And then, you know, if Christian comes back face, then, you know, he could go on to be a World Heavyweight Champion again, hopefully. Or at least go after the US Championship or Intercontinental or anything. Just Christian should be champion, really. Um, depending on how well he plays off coming back, really. I mean, I hope he doesn't do that whole gimmick that he was doing. I mean, if he goes heel and then starts doing that whole complaining thing again with the just one more match, that'll be so annoying. And, you know, he wouldn't be needed, I guess, as champion. But if he, if he comes back face, does more funny things and stuff like that, like him and Edge used to do, then I wouldn't mind seeing him as the champion again. But Dolph Ziggler obviously has the big advantage now in this match. Picking up Christian, bounce off the ropes, what's he going for now? Oh, Christian reverses. Christian has his hand through his head right now, and Dolph Ziggler hits his signature move there. That was not a Bulldog King, but Dolph Ziggler going for a zigzag again, hits it, he could win right now, going straight for the pin, one, two, three, Dolph Ziggler picks up the win against Christian, and that is it for match one, I guess, I guess we can see if there will be any cutscenes at the end of the match, probably not, because there hardly ever is on universe mode, oh wait, Damien Sandow coming out, the European champion, Staring down Dolph Ziggler. Dolph Ziggler wants him in this ring right now. And that is it. Damien Sandow remembers that he beat Dolph Ziggler on an Extreme Rules pay-per-view. And their rivalry will hopefully continue onwards. But right now we will advance into the next match. And that next match is Randy Orton versus Kane. So let's get into it. He's scheduled 
Michael Lombard, making his way to the ring. Let's say he was Missouri. Let's see. And he's 45 pounds. approaching the ring, weighing 323 pounds, one half of the unified WWE Tag Team Champions, King! So here we go, Randy Orton, the newly signed Randy Orton versus Kane, I'm gonna be... Oh, 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 I don't know who it landed on. Kane, okay. It's Kane, <laughs> hopefully... About to own up Ryan Dion here, who is still in his blue trunks. Uh, maybe thinking he's still on SmackDown. And he needs to change us to red for Raw now, since he is now a Raw superstar, I guess. But you know, this should be an interesting match. I mean, I'm sure these have had a few matches before, and they've been pretty good. And it'll be good to relive some classic moments, I guess. With Kane versus Randy Orton. I would have preferred to be Randy Orton right now, I've got to admit. I mean, I don't really like playing as the the bigger guys, I guess. And Randy Orton's like that, that strong, smaller guy with the good moves and stuff. So, I would have preferred to be Randy Orton right now. But, um, Kane's fine. Honestly, I, <laughs> the main reason I want to be Randy Orton right now is for the Arkeo finisher. Because it can come out of nowhere. <laughs> as pretty much all commentators say. Okay, hello out of nowhere. It's quite nice, actually. Kane just running into Randy Orton there, knocking him out of the ring. I thought Kane had that rollout move like The Undertaker where he steps over the top ropes type thing. Like, I don't know, back flip out of the top ropes type move. I hope you know what I'm talking about right now. But he just rolled out of the ring. Weird. But okay. Time to destroy a laptop. Oh, oh, I thought he would throw him. Throw up. Oh, Alright, pick him up. Stop kneeing him! I feel... Why is he just kneeing him? Is every move of Kane's just a, a knee? Oh! Through... No, no. Mitz and now table. Okay. Knee to the head. I feel like I should probably get back in the ring now. No, pick up the steps! No! That wasn't a disqualification. I'll take it. <laughs> I just threw the steps on top of Randy Orton and didn't count as a disqualification. Okay. I actually didn't even mean to do that. I pressed uh, LB to like drop the steps and Kane just decided, oh, let's just throw them on top of Randy Orton anyway. And it didn't even count as a count out. So, I mean, not count out, a disqualification. So I am completely fine with that. What's Randy Orton doing? Whoa. That was... Weird, I feel like that would have been a lot better if done to a cruiser guy, but against Kane that looked a bit weird on game. Too fast paced move. I feel like this match overall is quite fast paced really. A lot of back and forth. And that Rebecca just took Randy Orton out of the ring. What is Kane doing? <laughs> what? What was that? Kane just bounced off the apron? Well, off the ropes to the outside? Wow. Um, since when could Kane do that? Really? I'm gonna see if you can do like some type of Horacorana thing off the apron here. No, it is a punch. Can I grab him? He's no, no, Randy Orton reverse and knocked me off the apron. Great. He's doing his big wiggle now. <laughs> big wiggle taunt. I hate that taunt. It's weird. Too weird. Open punches to the skull of Randy Orton there. That's got to hurt as well. Oh, no. Sidewalk slam time. Got him up and down. Sidewalk slam. Kane could be going for the end right now. Signaling for the choke slam. Don't turn around. He's got him. He's got him up. And slams him down for the big choke slam. Randy Orton could be out. No, he's not. He's straight back up at a big kick there by Kane. That choke slam hardly did anything to Randy Orton right there. Oh, 
So Kane has Randy on in the corner now. Randy with the clothesline there. Kane straight back to his feet with a big punch. And that could have... Yeah, they did. It made Randy Orton groggy there. Got him up. And boom to the floor. Kane definitely has the other hand in this match right now. Randy Orton not doing too well. Throwing him into the corner now. And he just falls to the floor. The strength of Kane. I mean, I'm surprised that honestly hurt Kane's head there. I mean, that mask has to be somewhat protective. <coughs> One way or the other. And then Randy Orton goes for the legs, which is probably a smarter idea. Oh, Randy goes behind. Takes out the legs again. See, Randy now has a good idea. Going for the legs of the big man. It's that he can't really stand. Which is a smart idea. Going for the legs again. Down on the knee. Kane straight back up. Still not holding that knee yet, so maybe he's not as injured from all the assault from Randy Orton so far. Got him off sidewalk slam, maybe. Oh no, Randy with a reversal. Leg sweep. Goes for the uppercut, but misses. What's Kane doing now? He's got Randy on the top ropes. Got him for the choke slam. Off the top ropes. Hits him with it. Don't think Kane's done yet, though. Oh, wait. Reversal by Randy Orton. Orton up and slams down. What's Kane going for now? Tombstone could be. Yes, it is. Hits him with the tombstone. Randy should be all right now. Goes for the pin. One, two, three. Kane picks up the win against Randy Orton. So we will see right now if um, there is any cutscenes after this match. But then there's already been the Damien Sandow one, so I doubt it really. No, I don't think so. I think Kane's just going for his generic ending right now. So we will skip that and head on to the final matchup of the night. So this is the final match. Sheamus versus CM Punk. Let's get into it. <laughs> Contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Dublin, Ireland, weighing 272 pounds, the Celtic warrior, Shane. As approaching the ring from Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 222 pounds, C. So there we have it, CM Punk, the best in the world, versus the Irish, what's his nickname again, the Celtic Warrior, that's the one, Seamus, so we will get into this match here, we are going to be, oh, I don't know who I landed on, CM Punk again, okay, well not again, this is the first time I've been CM Punk, because in the pit of view, I was Jericho against Punk, and Jericho won the championship, as I've already stated in the last match, or the match just before the first match, so... We are in this match now, Sheamus versus CM Punk, and Sheamus with the, the starting, I guess, he's got the upper hand right now, but oh, out of the ring he goes, CM Punk jumps after him and misses with the, the jump to the outside there, Sheamus does manage to move out of the way just in time, and look at the pale white skin of Sheamus there, compared to CM Punk right now. Well, compared to CM Punk, that isn't really too bad. If it was compared to someone like Big Zeke, then <laughs> maybe it would be worse, his pearly white skin. But, yeah. What's happening here? It's got him up and through the announce table. But Jameis no-sells it and gets straight back up and in the ring. Surprising, and then a big double axe handle there by Sheamus. I'm surprised he's not hurt from just going through the announce table there. And what I've never understood about um, wrestling is how is the announce table not classed as a weapon? I mean, shouldn't that be a DD uh, disqualification if someone goes through the announce table? I mean, if you think about it, it's definitely hurting the person more than not going through the announce table would, I guess. 
I mean, if it was an actual table, would it class as disqualification? I honestly think so. So why doesn't the announce table class as a weapon, I guess? It probably should, but then again, it's there all the time. And people sort of use the steel steps um, during normal matches, which are always there as well. So I guess they can use that to their advantage, but at the same time, it's like, that's a bit um, unfair, I guess, how it's not classed as a weapon. Whereas a usual, uh, like a normal table would be. But yeah, now that CM Punk is being in matches, I am expecting him to be in a lot more now and Chris Jericho to completely disappear from the roster, which is never great. But, you know, some things have to happen and to be honest, I'd rather have more matches with CM Punk than more matches with Jericho. I mean, I don't know. That's what I would prefer. I don't know if all you people watching would prefer the same thing, but for me right now, I think I would rather see... CM Punk in a lot more matches than Jericho even though honestly I like both of them n near enough equally I don't know I think I prefer CM Punk a lot m well not a lot more more than Jericho but you know I, I do enjoy watching Jericho on the occasional months that he is actually on WWE TV I mean he's he's becoming a bit like The Rock if you think about it Jericho um, you know I mean The Rock goes away for a few months well, not even a few months, like pretty much years to do films and stuff. And then he comes back and gets automatically put into the main event. And, you know, Jericho, on the other hand, goes away for months to do music with his band. And then he comes back and gets voted into the main event. The only difference is between The Rock and Chris Jericho is that right now, at least Jericho can put on a good match after being away for months and The Rock sort of can't really um, <laughs> you know that I've said in numerous videos now that Rock Cena match at Wrestlemania was a complete disappointment in my eyes which I still believe and you know Jericho can still put on amazing matches even if he is gone for months because he actually remembers what to do and stuff like that whereas The Rock doesn't seem to as much I guess as Jericho but you know, I do actually like Jericho, he's good on the mic, he's good in ring especially, and um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if he actually gets put on his shows now that he is the Undisputed Champion. But it looks like CM Punk going for the, the finish already. Sheamus with the reversal. He's got his signature as well. Misses. Kick to the midsection, and he's going for the GTS. CM Punk got Sheamus up. And hits him with it straight to the head. CM Punk going for the pin. One. And Sheamus kicks out at one. CM Punk probably not going to live that down. Going to follow up with a combination of moves. But Sheamus has him now. Spins him around. But that doesn't really work off too well. Because CM Punk straight back on the offense. Hits him right in the neck area of Sheamus there. Now he's trying to choke him out. If Sheamus passes out. Then CM Punk gets an automatic win there. And goes for the leg drop but misses there. Sheamus does manage to move out of the way. And it looks like he's signaling for the bro kick. Sam Punk reverses. Turns the Sheamus round. It looks like he's good for the Anaconda Vice. Yes he is. He's got it locked in. Sam Punk could win by the Anaconda Vice right now. Sheamus looks as if he could tap. He can't really move to the ropes. And Sheamus does. He taps out. Sam Punk picks up the win there against Sheamus in the main event of the show. CM Punk also has a rematch for the Undisputed Championship at some point, so it'll be interesting to see when that will take place also. And there's Edge. What's Edge doing here? Edge looking at CM Punk right now, a bit like Damien Sandow did to Dolph Ziggler early on in the show. What is Edge doing out here? But yeah, that is it for this show. We will skip forward to the next row to see the matchup card. And then we will end the show there. So that is it for week five. Let's skip to the next Raw. We have Grandmaster Sexy vs Tensai, Damien Sano vs Cody Rhodes in a last man standing match. Rikishi vs Miz in Falls Count Anywhere. Dolph Ziggler vs Christian again, one on one. And CM Punk vs Edge. So next week I'll definitely be playing this match. And I might play the Falls Count Anywhere match. Rikishi and Miz, that could be interesting. And then the other three I'm not too bothered about. I'll probably play Dolph Ziggler Christian again. 
But um, yeah, that is it for this episode. If you would like to see the SmackDown side of things, check out Brendan Plays. His channel link will be in the description and there will be an annotation on screen right now, as there always is. So check him out. Subscribe to both of us if you haven't already. Like the video and all that good stuff. Leave a comment on how you thought about the show. And other than that, I will see you next time.